first page. So, a rock breaks loose from the top of a tall cliff. What is the average, sorry for the physics example, average speed of the first two seconds of the fall? So, what we're looking at here is how fast the rock falls on average during the first two seconds. So we know at time t equals zero, our height is, where the rock has fallen, better way of saying it, zero meters. And then at time t equals two seconds, our height is, Zero, what? What? I'm scared. What I do? T equals zero, y equals zero. And then t equals two, y equals 19.6, I believe. No. Yes? Four times 4.9? Is it? I think it is. Okay. So the average speed. The average speed is just the slope between those two points. So we can talk about delta t and delta y. So the change in position, or the change in height in this case, Divided by the change in time. That should be a T down there. Okay. So we get 19.6 minus 0 over 2 minus 0. Which is 19.6 divided by 2. 9.8. Now all the physics kids in here go, hee 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 hee. F set up the numbers really nice. 9.8 meters per second, which is the force of gravity, but you didn't need to know that for this course. So average is just a fancy way of hiding the word slope. Okay? Okay? I don't know if your physics teacher actually talked to you about that in, in physics 11 or 12. Did they use the word slope or didn't, you, didn't even talk about the word slope? Okay. Instantaneous speed. What we're going to do now, and I'm going to put a little picture over here. What we're going to do now is take our t equals 2 seconds and our y value of 19.6. And what we're going to do is, make, is just go a little bit past t equals 2 seconds. Maybe we'll do t equals 2.6. One. So find the y value for that. So 4.9 times 2.1 squared. Can you tell me the y value for that. 21.61. So the slope between those two points is 21.61 minus 19.6 over 2 minus 2.1. Pardon me? Mm, it should be negative. Oops, I did it backwards, sorry. Should be 2.1 minus 2. So, so it's positive. What'd you get? Tw no, no. Just tell me the answer again. 20.09. Okay. How do we... 20.1? Oh, okay. That. Okay. Well, 
Let's get a little bit closer. Close enough? How about a little bit more? Okay. So we can find the y values for each of those. How many zeros? One, two, three, four, five, seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, zeros, and then a one. So the slope between those two points is going to be what? Oh, I'm an idiot. You're right. And then when you subtract that from 19.6, and then when you divide it by 7. Well, what, okay, what's the point of that? When we learn about the slope formula, and I ask you the slope between two points, Oops. You can do that calculation because the points are in distinct places and when you subtract them, when you subtract x2 from x1, you don't get a value of zero, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to take a curvy shape and we're going to take a point here and we're going to take a point here we could, we could subtract x1 from x2 because it will give us a non-value of 0 and we can find the slope. But we're going to take that point x2 and we're going to slide it so close so that x2 and x1 are actually in the same place. And then when you subtract, what happens? You get a value of... No, no, no. Well, we, okay. If we, if we make them the same, if we make x1 and x2, we get 0. But if we make them so close that they might as well, they're almost touching, we get a value of 19.6. So what we can say then is the instantaneous velocity at that point is 19.6. That's actually where that really cool physics formula that you guys all learn about. Vf squared equals v naught squared plus 28d. Well, guess where calculus, sorry, calculus, guess where physics comes from? It's just an application of mathematics. Newton had to develop all of these ideas before he could actually go and drop the apple on his head. Okay? Physics wouldn't exist if calculus didn't happen. It couldn't happen. Because physics is the study of changing things. Guess what mathematics, guess what calculus does? It explains how things change. That's all it is. It's how, math, how functions change. Okay? It's the difference between a, taking a picture and taking a movie. Everything you learned in mathematics up till now is a picture. Now we're taking a movie. How things change. Okay? Algebraically, this is where it's kind of new. You're going to go like, what? So you need to bear with me for a second. So we're going to take some point T, where T is 2. 
and it's got a y value of 19.6. We're going to work with this point for a second. And then we're going to go just a sliver of time ahead. And we're going to give that point the coordinates 2 plus h. Why h? Because yeah. it always has been used as the letter h. And it's going to have the y coordinates. Four point nine times two plus h all squared. So we can find this. Yeah, because we're just taking we're taking the two plus h and substituting it in for t. So the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Clean that up. What can you do? Math 11. Come on, folks. O, I, O. O, I, O. For oil. Or 19, that's 6. I can't write. 2 plus h all squared is? Heard me? Somebody's saying it. What's the denominator? 2 plus h minus 2. Just H. Okay, clean up the numerator some more. Well, it's got to get messier before it starts cleaning up. 4.9 H squared plus 19.6 H plus 19.6 minus 19.6 all over H. Hmm. Hmm. Careful. How about you just do this? Right? So now you're left with... I don't know where we're going here. Running out of room. No. Ah, I want you to factor first. So... How we'll just how we just take an h out and that leaves us 4.9 h squared plus 19.6 all over h. Oops, h. Yeah, I'm sorry, can't factor. What happens to the h's? They cancel each other out. And then the neat thing is, is you can say. As h becomes 0, the slope becomes 4.9 times 0 plus 19.6. What's 4.9 times 0 plus 19.6? 19.6. Nineteen so the instantaneous velocity is 19.6 meters per second. And that's actually where the physics formula for final velocity comes from. It actually comes from this process that we just did. Okay. H stands for us sliding over just a little sliver over in time. So we're going h units over in time. So like it's like point zero 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 one units over in time. Okay? Tiny little slower sliver over in time. Or we could go a tiny sliver back in time as well. We don't actually have to go forward in time, we go back in time, the same thing happens. You don't want to hear me go 1.9999. Nine, 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 
9999. Same thing happens. Okay? So what we want to do is make h so small that it might as well become 0. But if you look at what, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to clean this up so that we can put 0 in for h. Okay, instead of 2.0001, we would love just to put 2. Right? Because that's what, it, that's what instantaneous velocity is. Is what is the slope right at that point? What is the slope right here? Well, that's really hard to do. So what we do is we do the slope between these two points and then we just make that red point get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer so that the red point and the black point are on top of each other. That's actually what we're doing here. Or at least that's the reason why we need to do it. Flip the page. That's... It's kind of an... That whole page was kind of an introduction about why we need to do what we do in mathematics. The next pile of pages are... Um, we go completely away from those ideas and all we do is talk about what a limit is. Okay, and a limit is an important term in this course, or at least for the first little while. Limits can be used to describe how a function behaves as the independent variable moves towards a certain value. Okay, so what I would like you to do is to figure out what the function is doing as it gets close to zero, as the function sine x over x gets close to zero. So what I want you to do is to type y equals sine x divided by x looks like. So window settings, just make your y min and y max smaller, make them twos, that should be fine. Hit the graph button. I just leave those as tens, they're fine. Y min and Y max are negative two for Y min and Y max is positive two. Sine X divided by X. Everybody got that picture there? Okay, what I would like you to do is to hit the trace button and arrow around the X value of zero and see what the Y values get close to as the x value gets close to zero. So hit the trace button. Notice that it doesn't do anything when it's at zero. Maybe we need to think about why that's happening in a second. But as x gets close to zero, y gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so close that it gets, it gets really close to... No. No, look at, look at, look at the x. x is 0.21. Negative 0.21, y is 0.99. What is 0.99 really close to? Okay. And then go to the right-hand side of it. Look at it now. As x gets close to 0, y is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, but it's... Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting. Well, let's hit second window. Table set's a really kind of a neat thing to do. We'll make table start, you want your y of x values to start at zero, and we don't want them to change very much, so we'll make that like point zero zero one. hit second window, and it gives you your table settings. So it's going to make a table of values now, and, and you can tell the calculator to start making the table of values at when x is zero, and make those x values go up by very small amounts. So if you hit second graph, And you, if you arrow up a little bit, hmm, when x is negative 0 0.001, y is 0 0.9999983. Three, 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 three. Hmm, jeez, 0.999998. That's really close to what number? One. And then look at that. Jeez, Mr. F, it's the same over there. Why is it saying error here, kids? Look at the original function. Why is it saying error? 
you can't divide by zero. So graphically, what actually should happen, and if you had really good computer software and not a graphing calculator, the picture would look slightly different. The calculator would, the computer, if you're using a good piece of graphing software on the computer, it would actually put a little hole there. Okay? And what we say is, is as x gets close to zero, as x gets close to zero, our y values, both in our graph and our table, got close to one. So as x gets close to zero, y gets close to one. And the way we write that is like this. As the x values get close to zero of the function sine x over x, the y values get close to one. Okay? Yes? You didn't get that graph? Hit mode on your calculator, make sure it says radian. Okay, so it goes like this. So what we could do here, and I'm just going to draw another one, and I'm just going to draw a little picture here. Um, so we got a function. I don't know. And we'll say that's one, and we'll say that's four. So what we can say for this function, we'll call this y equals f of x. So we can say the limit as x approaches 1. So as we get really, really close to 1, our y values get really, really close to... Well, I tried to make it the number 4, but if you want to call that a 9, you can call it a 9. There, now it's a 9. So as we get really close to 1, our y values get really close to 9. Yeah, or 4, or whatever number you want to make that. Okay? Does that kind of make sense, what we're doing here? Pardon me? Sure. I'll, I'll draw, we'll do another one next to it. No, just, it's easy. Oh, it's good for you. Practice is good. So we've got a function. And we'll say that's 17. And who cares what the number is, really? And we'll say that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what we're going to say is the limit as x approaches 17 of that function, as we get really, really close to 17, woo, and our y values get really close to 5. Do they have to be 5? No. They just have to get close to 5. Okay? Clear on that? Yes, Kelsey. This circle just means that there might be a hole there, like we divided by 0. We'll learn about what's going on there. It just means the graph doesn't actually have to have a point there. So it's like, if you really, it's really hard to see it, but it's as if I drew the graph and then I picked my pencil up for a tenth of a second, went over that dot and put the pencil back down and I kept on drawing. Okay? That means there can't be a point there, yeah. 
limit. It means, means to get really close to that value and see what the y values are doing. Okay? Well, it could be whatever. Like any function. You could have e to the x cos x there. It's just, it's function. It's, yeah, whatever it is. You know, here, over there, it was sine x over x, but it can be anything. Okay? The way we read it, oh yeah, by the way, highlight this one. You're going to need this later in the year. This is an important one. Okay, so what we've just been saying is, is the definition of a limit. The limit as x approaches some number a, the, li the limit of the function as x approaches some number a is equal to some number l. What it means is, what it means is, is we're just going to take the graph, the function, and that function can look like anything. So you can draw just about any scribble you want up there. Right? And here's the value A. As we get really, 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 really close to that value A, our graph gets really, 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 really close to that value of L. Are you really, really clear? But I'm um, okay. Flip the page. What? What? Question? Okay. So I'm going to draw three pictures here because I'm good at drawing these really fast. I'm not going to expect you to spit these out yet. There. Are, no. I, no. It's not. Mr. App, this is a line with a weird spot on it. That's actually what that function looks like. You don't have to know why until later. So what we can say is, and here's the part that's really kind of cool, is the limit as x approaches 1 of that function it takes on the value of 2. Notice I didn't say when x is 1. I said when x approaches 1. When x gets really, I'm not saying it any more than once. When x gets really close to 1, y gets really close to 2. The second one, it's the same graph, but somebody's attempted to fix the drywall. When x gets really close to 1, the function still gets really close to 2. That dot is the second part of the piecewise statement there. You see that g of x equals 1 when x equals 1? It's just putting a, another, yeah. And then c... This is the one that you've done so many times in Math 10. No, it's just a straight line. You could put a dot there if you wanted to use there. because it's something that I graphed in grade 10 about 76 and a half million times until I part. Well, because, okay, now here's why. Okay, okay, okay. How do I know that? I'm answering the question. In math 10, you guys should have talked about excluded values. What are you not allowed to divide by? 
here your x is never allowed to be positive 1 because if x is positive 1 oopsies you just divided by 0 right so in math uh, 10 before you simplified the rational expression the first thing that your teacher should have made you do is to say x cannot equal 1 and then they should have made you factor and then cancel so then you could have graphed the function y equals f of a, y equals x plus 1 but you can't have a value of 1 that's what that's how i knew how to graph that b is the same thing but somebody added a, a, an extra piece on they just added this piece on here okay that's actually how i do a and b so fast I know what A looks like. B is just the same thing with somebody attempting to fix the drywall. Fill in the hole. But they put the drywall in the wrong place. Well, it's not useless. It just doesn't answer the question. The, the, there's a statement at the top of the page that, that, that I want to stress. The, the existence of the limit as it approaches some value C, here are the examples all about one, doesn't actually depend on what the value is at that point. It only, va it only matters on what it is close to that point. Know what I mean? As you slide in from the left, I'm using hands, as you slide in from the left and as you slide in from the right, it really doesn't matter where you're sliding to as long as your fingers are pointing at the same place. It doesn't actually matter where you're... You could have a point way up here now. Know what I mean? It's just, we have to be pointing at the same place. Our graph has to point at 2. Our graph has to point at 2. Our graph has to point at 2. So, silly question. I mean, it's the same example. Oops. Does this point even matter when I talk about the limit as x approaches 2? No, I don't even see it. Because all I'm doing is being that ant, walking along this line going, Woo, cool, I'm getting really close to 4. Okay, I can't see up there. All I can see is just what's in front of me. Yeah? Okay. That's an important idea. That whole idea of the, the, the point doesn't actually have to be there. We just have to be pointing at the same number. The ant from the left is talking to the ant on the right-hand side of the line, and they're saying, hey, we're really both close to two. That's sweet. Okay? Okay. Mr. Up, can we go a little faster? Or no? 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 Okay. I'm just getting some looks from some people. The sum rule. Okay, if I have two limits and I'm adding them together, the fast way to do it is to do the limit of each of them and add the answers together. So if I had this, And I said the limit as eight as x approaches why am I doing this in yellow? As x approaches three of f of x, you would say the answer is four. And then over here I'm gonna have another one. And here we are at three again. And we're gonna say that's seven. And you can say the limit as x approaches three of g of x is seven. So here we go. What's the answer to this question? Not 10. 11. What's the answer to this question? Negative 3. What's the answer to this question? It's time. 28. What's the answer to this question? 4 over 7. 
What's the answer to this question? 16. What's the answer to this question? 2. Um, have I done all the rules? Did you notice I was doing them as, I was trying to do them as we went down? Oh, what's the answer to this question? 36. So all I'm doing is, is checking off the rules. If I have two functions and I add them together, I can just add the limits together. If I have two functions and I'm subtracting them, I know I just subtract the limits. It's easier. If I have two functions and I multiply them, multiply the limits. If I have two functions and I am multiplying them by 4, some number k. So take the limit and multiply it by 4. Two functions dividing, you can divide the limits as long as you don't divide by 0. 0 is such a bad number. It's pretty cool, but such a bad number. And if I square square root the function, I can square square root the limits. Yeah? Okay, flip the page. So here's why we're doing this. Here's why we're talking about this. Using the property of limits. So I have some function x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3, and I am interested in the y value as x gets really close to 2. How can we do that? Could we graph it? Good choice. I'm lazy like you. So the first thing that I'm going to always do is just to substitute the value 2 in for all the x's. So 2 cubed plus 4 times 2 squared minus 3. And then you get 8 plus 16 minus 3 is 20, 21. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it. What you actually can do is recognize that there, instead of one big function there, you could recognize that there are actually three little functions there. Not that, that, that this would be any easier to do. Sometimes it is. And you could find out each of those little pieces and then add all your little pieces together. Yes, Tyler, it's the same answer. Right? Of course, it's got to be the same answer, right? Okay. The third way you could do this is you could actually graph it on your calculator and hit the trace button and arrow around to and see what your y values get close to. Yeah? The fourth way, type it in your graphing calculator and use the table command to see what your y values get close to when your x values are 2. Okay? Okay. B. What can you do here? Good. Now you're thinking to yourself, Mr. App, why are we doing this? Because this is just like math 10 and 11, right? Just substituting values in and getting y values. You're right. It is, but I'm leading somewhere. Look at C. Substitute one in. Uh-oh, you can't substitute. So the only thing we can do is dig into our skulls and remember a little bit of grade 10 mathematics. Factor the numerator. Two numbers multiply to negative 2 and add to positive 1. x minus 1, x plus 2. Okay, did anything really cool happen? Good. This is one of the few places that you can actually use equals, 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 equals in a line because they're actually all equal to each other. So I don't mind run on sentences with this.
Can you substitute now? Yes, so now you can. So as x gets pro close to 1, y gets close to 3. We just avoided the division by 0 problem. Yay! No more division by 0. See how powerful that is? I think it's huge. Okay, what about the next one? Substitute. Can't factor. So the only way you can do it is you can't substitute right away and you can't factor and cancel. The only way to do this is to graph it. So everybody type y equals 1 over x minus 1 in their graphing calculator. What? Quit ruining it for me. No. No, no, I'm going to show you. Well, that sine x over x, you, that's the only way you can do that one is to graph it. You can't actually substitute, and you can't factor, so the only way you can do that is to graph. So type in y equals 1 over, so in your graphing calculator, I should expect everybody to type this in y1. So use, I don't know, you could use fives, negative 5, 5, negative 5, 5, that'll work good. Yeah, no, just the window. So when you graph that, your calculator should show you something that looks like this. Yes? Yeah, I'm, I got a crap. I don't draw very well. Really? Okay. Oh, boo. Boo. You got to use a minus. X minus one, not X negative one. Okay, so here you are on this nice line that's sloping down. You're the ant here. The ant's walking along this line, and we're getting really close to one. What's happening to this ant? What's he getting close to? Negative infinity. Okay. So then we put another ant on the other line and he's walking along and he gets close to one. What's he getting close to? Are those the same number? No. Is positive two the same number as negative two? No. Is positive infinity the same as negative number as negative infinity? So when that happens, when the numbers are not the same, we say the limit does not exist. And the way we write it even faster, because who wants to write does not exist every time? D and E. Okay. So you've got to think about the ant walking along the curve. Okay. Flip the pin. Don't wait. Sorry. No, um, you'll find out in a second. The ant has to be, both ants have to be walking towards the same number. How would they not? Oh, well, how would they not? No, no, how would they not? Just a sec. Yeah, well, quick. So, if I just do 1 over x, the ants don't walk towards the same place as I get close to zero. But if I changed it to 1 over x squared just to make it cool, th this, isn't, this is something later in the future. As x gets close to zero, both ants are actually walking towards the same number. What number are they walking towards? Positive infinity. So you would actually say the limit exists. It's positive infinity. Okay. Kind of. The ants just got to be walked. Other, well, it, where will it, it'll happen on these pictures. Because I forced, because the, 
that's actually the great word. That's actually the right word. It's because they're not, in the mathematics, we call that continuous. Because it's not a smooth curve. And smooth curves are really nice and warm and fuzzy. But as soon as the curves are not smooth, all sorts of bad things can happen. Okay? So the way we read this is see that little positive after the one? And we look at the little one after the positive sign after the one. That means we are looking on at the right hand side of one. So I want you to find the curve that is just to the right hand side of one. So that's this one here. Can we see that? Okay, now make the ant walk back towards one. What does the y value get close to? Zero. Okay, B. Start on the left hand side of one. Oh crap, that's not the same curve, is it? The left hand side of one is over here. So we're talking about this part of the graph. Now walk them back towards one. What's your answer? Two. Okay. Part C says walk from both sides towards one. Are we walking towards the same number? Are we walking towards the same y value? Are the ants going to meet and say, hey, how's it going? No, you're not. So your answer is going to be, does not exist. And the trigger for that is, is these two numbers don't match. Okay. So if those two numbers don't match, your answer is the limit does not exist. There is no limit. Okay, D. Start the ants walking towards zero from both directions. Where do they get close to? Two. E. Sure. So here we are. There's zero, right? Walk towards zero, walk towards zero. Are we both walking towards the same y value? The y value is 2. Yeah, then. Yeah, we don't even see them. Yeah, you're only, look, you're only looking at, like, for example, when we were looking at 1, we're only looking at this part of the graph and this part of the graph. Curtis. So, for A... The right hand side of one, this is the right hand side of one. And over here, this is the left hand side of one. Yeah, you gotta get close to one from the right hand side, and you gotta get close to one from the left hand side. Which one? For D? Okay, so what I'm always doing, what I'm always doing is Find that value on your graph paper. That's here. Now find the function. Find the function. The function's up here. And now walk towards the value that you're interested in. Okay? So the next one, find two, the right hand side of two. So find two. There's two. Where's the right hand side of two? Find the function on the right hand side of two. It's the bottom little dumbbells, right? Okay, walk back towards two. What are you getting close to? Negative one. Yeah, yeah, what are the y values? It's always what are the y values doing? So the next one, find the left-hand side of two. There's two. The left-hand side of two is there. Walk towards two. What are you getting close to? positive one. Do they match? So what's your answer to G? Does not exist. Okay? Now what do you think this last one means? My, negative one plus. 
Right hand side of negative 1. Good. Right hand side of negative 1. So find negative 1. There's negative 1. The right hand side, that's there. Walk towards negative 1. That's right. And that only has the left hand side there. So the answer is 2. Okay, flip the page. We're just going to do the next page and then we're going to stop. So, I want you to do B on your own. I want you to do B on your own. Oh, I know. Especially when you're just writing down numbers. Mr. F, that's unreasonable. Just got to write down eight numbers. Actually, you can do C if you want to while you're there. do everything to G for sure. Okay, here we go. Positive 1 from the right hand side, there's 1, go to the right hand side, we get really close to negative 1. Positive 1, what? On the right hand side of positive 1 and go back towards 1. Yeah, you always go back towards the, that number. So the next one says start on the left hand side of 1 and go back towards 1. Negative 1. Do those two numbers match? So your answer is negative 1. Okay, D says go towards 0 from both directions. Well, when you do that, you get an answer of 0. No, nope, you don't even care. You don't even see them. That's the key. Okay, negative 1 plus, negative 1 plus, that means right hand side of negative 1, right hand side of negative 1 is over here. Go back towards negative 1 and you get a value of 1, right? Yes? Okay, negative 1 minus. Start on the left hand side of negative 1 and walk towards negative 1. What do you get close to? 1. Do they match? So, what's the answer to G? There you go. Now, H is the weird one. Not the weird one. H is saying, when X is 1, or negative 1, what's Y? When X is negative 1, what's Y? No, it is not. When x is negative 1, y is 2. And we see the dot there. We don't see the dots when we're talking about limits, but we do see the dots when we're talking about coordinates. When x is negative 1, y is 2. Y is what? Why is g 0? Oh, because I'm an idiot. Mr. Trev, don't put yourself down, I know. It's 1. Okay, see if you can do the next ones. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Look at the picture. As x approaches 0 from the right, the graph gets really close to... What? Anywhere. For, for A? So you just start somewhere on the right. How about like right here? Because it says plus. Go to the... Start on the right hand side of zero and go back towards zero. So, to infinity and beyond. Okay, B says start on the left hand side of zero. Negative infinity. 
Are they the same number? No. Does not exist. So we'll finish it tomorrow. What's your homework for tonight? That practice test. Answers are posted. Yep.